All right, good afternoon and welcome to Neil Schwartz Mastermind. Today we have Trent Mathis from Savannah. Very excited to have you on board for our time as the Mastermind and wanted to get to, to know you a little bit, Trent. So what's the Reader's Digest version on you? So what gives us a little bit of where you're from, what, what your story is, how long in the business, some of that kind of stuff. Can you start off with that? Okay, well, Neil, I want to start off with thanking you for having me here. Thank you very much for that. Um, and I'll dive in. Um, I was born in Nevada, grew up in Portland, Oregon, joined the Marine Corps straight out of high school, spent 12 years doing that. And uh, that's kind of what got me into real estate. So wait, so 12 years, you spent 12 years in the Corps? I did, yes. Good for you. Thank you for your service. Wow. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Yeah. Um, Upon exiting, I wanted to get into real estate investment. So I started going with that avenue and I quickly found out that realtors just would not answer their phones or return calls. <laughs> oh, which wow. <laughs> led me to go get my real estate license so that I could go show those properties to myself. Wow. And from so, that. So that's interesting. So you were an investor. You were somebody that was going to buy a piece of property from an agent through an agent, right? Right. And they weren't returning their calls and you wanted to buy and sell real estate. So you decided you just go around them and, um, and do it yourself because they weren't returning any phone calls. Interesting. I got started. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I've, I've heard of stories, but I've not heard that one. Good for you. <laughs> Good, good for you. So that was when? When did you get your license? That was 2012. 2012. Okay. Um, and how long were you out of the core then? You got out in 11? I got out in 12. I went straight in. Interesting. Yeah. Any, any college education, anything like that along the way? I barely graduated high school now. Got it. I can relate. Uh, good job. So 2012, got into real estate and... Um, Tell me what happened. You started buying and selling houses or, or started returning phone calls to clients and actually started doing deals? Exactly what I did. Um, <laughs> so when I got in there and started getting some clients, I realized I kind of like this better of helping people buy and sell real estate versus the buying it. Um, and I also needed to generate additional income to buy properties. Right. So my whole goal with the real estate was to generate more income to buy properties to within fund retirement. Okay. All right. So generate income, um, buy some properties along the way and fund retirement. Worthy goal. Worthy goal. I love it. So how, how did the first year work out? Well, it was 2012. We were starting to come out of that recession. So mm -hmm. how was that first year for you? I did 24 transactions. Wow. Good for you. And what that was in what, what area? Warner Robins, Georgia. Hot spot, right? Not then. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere's a hot spot now. Yeah. A Warner Robins, Georgia, not too far from Atlanta, I think, right? About 100 miles southwest of Atlanta. Got it. Okay, cool. And uh, is that where you were stationed? Uh, when I got out, yes, that's where I was stationed. Interesting. Okay. And um, so you, you met a girl probably part of the process here, right? I met her before that. So uh, in the Marine Corps, people don't know, we, we typically move every three years in what's called a PCS. Uh -huh. uh, so permanent change of station orders. And while I was in Buford, South Carolina, I met my wife here in Savannah. Ah, that's how we got to Savannah. That's how we got to Savannah or initially. And then we moved around and then um, started the business in 2012. And in 2018, decided, let's go live on the beach or near the beach. Let's go back to Savannah. So I just kind of picked up and left. Like it was a, a one day discussion. Really? Yes. So just, even though you were doing what, 20, 30 transactions at the time? 85. Whoa. So in 2012, so in 2018, so between 12 and 18, you did 85, uh, got moved to 85 transactions? 
I built up to in 2018, I did 85 transactions. And you decided to move 300 miles away where she had some family, but you had no base of business. No base at all. What were you making at 85 transactions? Uh, just over 200,000. The price point was terrible. Okay. Okay. So, well, 80, so you were working really hard for not a lot of money. Right. And moving to Savannah, and then, did that move the price point up? It doubled the price point. Okay. Okay. Got it. And then, so your first year in Savannah with no past client or sphere to speak of, maybe a little bit of sphere with her family with her family, right? A little bit, yeah, it's very yeah. limited. Okay, work in expireds for sale by owners? All of the above, uh, expireds for sale by owners, just listed, just sold, and starting to build a database. Got it, so, so that first year in Savannah, how many transactions? 42. 42, you are quite an underachiever. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. So 42 Please. deals. What? So 42 trans. So that's what I believe. Yeah, absolutely. So where are you now business-wise? Number of deals and, and income. Uh, right now, closed 50 for this year. 20. And another nine pending current. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so 2020. All right. And so, income is uh, just shy of 300 right now. Very good. All right. So we're moving and shaking. Okay. So you needed, you knew what to do. You knew, you knew, you knew what to do. You knew how to say it. Were you working with Mike Ferry at the time you, you were in um, before you moved to Savannah? Yes. Okay. All right. So you yep. had a, you had a game plan and, and what to do, but you hit the ground with no business to speak of and you went from zero to 60, that's what we wanna know. We wanna hear that story. What did you do? You what? Okay. okay, that's, that's right, what so we wanna hear. I guess there's gotta be a little bit of backstory to that, um, real quick, if I may. Um, in 2012, when I did the 24, I, I looked at that year and I said, well, apparently all I know how to do is 24 transactions, or I would have done more. So, if I want to grow this business, I've got to seek outside help. So I got online and just started researching real estate coaches. And I came across the Mike Ferry organization. I called them and I signed up for Premier on day one. Never been to an event, never heard him speak. I just knew I needed to do something and he was the man to do it. So that's what kind of catapulted me in, in the direction of increasing my business and building the systems and, and tools and knowing what to say and how to say it. So when I can move that market, as, as Mike stated many times, you can pick him up, put him in any market and he'll dominate. Right. So I have the same thought process. I can, I know how to do this. I, I'll just go over there and do it. Got and it. So it would stick into the schedule every single day. I'm up at 4.30 AM. I'm at the gym at five. I'm in the office no later than 7.30, role play practice, prospecting eight to noon. And I just did that every single day. That was your job. That was my job to even generate. The days, even the days you didn't feel like doing that? Yes. Hey, yeah. so Trent, let me ask you this. Were there okay. were you ever, were you ever, I don't know if depressed is, is the right word, but um, um, frustrated, let's say, and, and concerned that, oh my gosh, you know, I, I prospected yesterday, I prospected today, you know, I'll prospect tomorrow, I'm not getting any leads, I need a sale. I, did that ever go through your head and you tempted to not do your job the next day? So it always goes through your head when I guess you're, you're not getting the instant gratification, right? You're saying, I did this, I know my numbers, I should have had a contact or I should have had a, an appointment by now and it hasn't taken place, but I don't allow that to affect what's going to happen to me the rest of the day or the next day or anything else, because you, you just do your best to try to set an appointment that day. If it doesn't happen, when you wake up, it's a new day, you start from zero and you go at it again. 
because if you allow the little things to eat at you, it's just going to beat you up. It's not going to be any fun. But the things eat at you anyway, you just shrug them off? Absolutely, yes. And, and you could shrug them off because your goals were bigger than the things that were eating at you? I would say, yeah, it could have been the goals bigger than that. And I think the Marine Corps helped me a lot with that prior to entering real estate because it's all about mission accomplishment, right? So you've got to accomplish a mission. It doesn't matter what you have to do to do it. And so I kind of kept that with me through all of this time. Wow, that's great. That's a, that's a great thought. Mission accomplished. I mean, the fact that the seller was mad at me, I, it doesn't destroy my mission. Right. So I'm a firm believer if, it, if it's not going to affect me in five years, don't spend five minutes worrying about it. So tell me more about that. Was that? If, it, if, it, it's, if it's not going to affect me in five years, don't spend five minutes thinking about it. So... Give me an example of what you're referring to there. Uh, so with prospecting, for example, getting hung up on, right? Getting yelled at by a potential seller. Them yelling at me is, is not going to affect my life in five years. So I'm, I'm not going to give it five seconds. I'm, I'm going to move on and, and go to the next one and just do my best to do my job. Well, you seem to be doing a terrific job at that. Congratulations. Thank you. So you started 2020 with a goal to do how much business? 50. So the goal was 50 deals in 2020, but in 2019, you did how many deals? Uh, 2019 did 48. 48. So you really didn't stretch your goal very much. Well, I, I started coaching in 2019 as well. Ah, okay. So my time got limited as far as... Uh, the amount of time I had in a day for prospecting and, and generating business. So how much, how much time, how many coaching clients are you carrying? 14. Okay. Well, that's a good amount. What's that? Um, probably 10, 12 hours of, uh, of coaching a week. So yeah, about that. And then there's also prep and everything else. Cause it's not like we just show up to the calls and just have a conversation. Right. So so Trent, I suspect that you're helping guys and gals at where you, your level started, getting started. What are the first two or three or four things that you're having them do? So the number one is the business plan. Number two is establishing a schedule. That's gonna work for them. And there's not a one size fits all solution for the schedule. So you've, you've got to learn a little bit about them and their business and and tailor it, but it's it's always going to change. So you got to be tweaking that throughout the process as well. Okay. Um, the next thing is to be role play and practice. They've got to get comfortable with the scripts. They've got to have the knowledge of the scripts. They have the confidence to be able to have those conversations and turn those into listing appointments and listings taken. Good. Okay. Um, and of course, presentation, everything else, start getting involved in the mastermind groups. It's just constant growth throughout the process. Mastermind and growth. Okay, got it. All right. So you still role play and practice today? Yes, I do. Okay, do you have a, a how, how much time a day do you spend on it? I do 30 minutes in the morning, five days a week. And I do 30 minutes in the afternoon for the presentation five days a week. Good for you. And you do this and, and anything get in the way or, or is this one of those deals where nothing gets in the way of that? Nothing gets in the way. My, my schedule is, I mean, if I can show you my calendar, it is time blocked from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. And there's, there's no room for, for anything not to happen in that time frame. Come on, Trent. Come on. Tell me the truth. Doesn't something happen sometimes? No. There, there's, there's not enough time in the day. Is that and, a great that, That's so fantastic an attitude. I love it. And I, I, I mentioned it. it stops at 6. Yeah. Because that's that's my go home time. It doesn't okay. matter what's happening, what didn't get a call. I'm going home. I'm ending the day, and then I'm coming back tomorrow and I'm doing it again. So you stay. You 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 set your schedule. As is there are there times? Let me ask you this. So when you set your schedule, I suspect families first because you moved to Savannah, so she's got some kind of sway over you, right? 
<laughs> it was actually my idea to move back. <laughs> ah, okay. So, but, but I suspect based on what I do know of you is that family does come first, correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So if there's a particular family event during the week that gets penciled in first and then the prospecting and scripts and things work around it. Is that how it works? No, not, not with prospecting. No, oh. that, that oh. is, that is an appointment. Uh, and I am not missing that appointment. Really? Really. Um, okay. as, as Tony Smith would say, right? Any day you're not prospecting is the day you're not in business. I love that. I, 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 I love your I love your commitment. I, uh, Tony, I've heard that again and again and again. But what happens is, you know, to really find that person. So you're saying that if, it, uh, I don't mean to go this deep, but if one, you, you have children? I do. I have four. Wow, good for you. Uh, whether it, boys, girls? First two are boys, second two are girls. And how old's the oldest? 14. 14. So along the way, if there was a back to school day or some teacher conference or something during the day, you wouldn't go to that if it was if it fell into prospecting time? If it fell into prospecting, I'm not going. And everyone is fully aware of that. Really? Really. Wow, good for you. Good for you. Can we clone you? You can try. <laughs> I've been trying to do it myself. <laughs> oh, I love it. Fantastic. Okay. So 50 transactions, COVID's here, 2020, March 17th. The world kind of starts thinking about coming to a stop. Uh, what goes through your head, Trent? Uh, went through my head with COVID was this is a great opportunity. Um, I look at everything as an opportunity. I don't look at it as being destructive and at everything or a problem. There's, there's an opportunity in everything. So I looked at it as what's my opportunity here? And it, it was pretty easy to see that every other agent in the area is, is going to disappear. So this was my time to really dive in and almost double down, really, to get these other appointments that other agents may have gotten. And, and that, um, did, was there any, no fear, no concern, no trepidation? I would just, you know, one day to the next. One day to the next. I mean, I, I wasn't worried about contracting COVID or anything. If I did, I guess I'd stay home for 14 days, but I would just <laughs> 14 days straight. I guess that comes from being a gunner on a Huey helicopter, you know. Yeah. You don't, you're not afraid of a lot of stuff. And a little, little bit of door knocking or phone canvassing isn't an issue, right? Right, yeah, not an issue at all. <laughs> Got it. And a hard day at work. Where, where were you, where were you uh, deployed? Iraq. So we, in Iraq, that was hard work, right? Oh, yes. Long yeah. days. And it was hot there, right? Very hot. Very hot. And um, it, it didn't matter that you didn't want to do it or didn't what whatever it was, dig something or carry something or go out on a flight. It, that was that was your job, correct? Correct. Yeah. So getting up in the morning and doing your job here in real estate, I'm not going to say it's a cakewalk, but it's probably a little bit easier, right? It's a lot easier. <laughs> and you make more money? A lot more money, yeah. I love it. I love it. It's a great story. Great story. So, um, so what did you learn from from working through um, the pandemic so far? What was a is there any uh, ahas along the way for you? Uh, I learned that. I mean, I always asked a lot of questions when I was talking to people and setting appointments. But I learned if I ask even more questions, open-ended questions, that I can actually just take a listing on the phone call. So there, oh. was, yeah, there was no need to go on an appointment or a Zoom appointment either at that point. It was just ask enough and basically get them to say they'll sign a contract when I send it over in 15 minutes. It became that, becomes that simple for you. It, be, it became that simple. I would say half of the listings I've taken this year have just been on the phone. And it's because you're asking more and better questions? Yes. What, did you, is it, um, so that's a question that the agents will probably ask you in the open question, but I'll ask it now anyway. Is, um, uh, is asking questions come naturally to you? Is that something that uh, 
that you've done all your life or did, did you start learning that somewhere along the way? That was definitely a learned process um, since being with Mike in, in the military in general, I would probably venture to say, especially in the Marine Corps, it's just orders. You're, you're told to do something and your response is aye, sir, and you go do that job. There's, there's never any questions asked. So we're kind of taught to not ask questions and to get into a business where you should be asking a lot of questions. It was very difficult at first for me. So what did you, what, how did you learn it? What did you do? Did you go to school for it? Did you practice it? How, how'd you do this? Uh, a lot of practice, practice, role play. Um, I, the broker at the time I had, we played a question game where I wasn't allowed to just make statements when we were, I was conversing with him and we see each other in the halls or going to an office. It was just questions back and forth. And the first person to make a statement versus a question had to pay the other person 20 bucks on the spot. Really? I yeah. like that. Yeah. I like that. I want everybody, we're going to start playing. <laughs> I like that. That's great. Um, fantastic. So that's kind of where you feel you learn to ask questions, kind of build your skill, your muscles, so to speak. And then, um, and then you're taking, so, so out of 50 transactions you're, you've done so far, what percentage of those are listings? About 70%. So 70% are listings. Uh, uh, what's the sources? Uh, the main sources this past year has been uh, Center of Influence because I've worked hard to build that. And I just. Well, really wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> you just got there. I know. So tell me about that. Okay. So the year prior, right, I had 40 and so transactions. So those were past clients that I could call on. Right. A lot of those were military. So I utilized them to kind of find out who was coming to the area with inbound rosters and things like that. So I could get to them while they were still in Korea or still in Germany and haven't arrived yet. And then I would utilize them to, to basically infiltrate their units and start getting to know other people there. Who that military term. Right. <laughs> And just getting to know people and, and building up this center of influence and getting referral business from it. So, so basically talking to people. Talking to people, exactly. And, and then they would refer you to a people and you would talk to them and talk to their circle. Right. Interesting. And, and the thing we did as well was, I think it was Josh Barker said that he does with all of his listings is at the end of the presentation in his listing package, there's a spot for three referrals. And he asked them for referrals right there after he gets his contract signed. Wow. So I started well, doing that as well. So you're doing, so you're doing that, right? Yes. So how do you stay in touch with your past client and sphere? Uh, past on the phone. Sorry? On the phone. I just call them. Okay. So not a bunch of mail, not a bunch of emails. Do you call weekly, monthly, quarterly? So it depends on what kind of um, database they belong to, right? You get your A and B. So if, if they do refer business to me or have a very high potential to refer business to me, they go in my A bucket, which I call every 30 days. Okay. Everybody else goes into bucket B, which is once a quarter. Okay, so once a quarter, once every 30 days. So on the 30-day people, because I hear this all the time, um, I know what to say the first time. What do I say the second and the third time? The same I, I thing. Well, what do you mean? Well, because they don't remember what you said 30 days ago. Yeah, but you think they... I don't they, remember what I had for lunch yesterday, Neil. <laughs> okay, so so you that doesn't, that doesn't stick in your head where you're worried about what to say, correct? Correct. Okay. So what's your, what is your 30 day script? Do you, uh, can you share it with us? Well, yeah, it's, it's Mike Ferry script. You know, just call it business call. Do you have a moment? Yeah. Who do you know, look into buy or sell real estate in the next seven to 10 days. You know, I can't think of anybody right now. 
Okay, I can understand that. You can't think of anybody you work with or maybe you go to church with or, or one of your neighbors that's been thinking about it or talking about it? Oh, well, you know, now that you bring it up, yeah, one of our neighbors was saying something about it. Oh, fantastic. Do you know which neighbor that is? Yeah, the one on the left of me. Okay, do you know his name or her name? Yes, A.B. A.B., okay. Do you have A.B.'s phone number? Uh, one, two, three. Okay, perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them a call and let them know that uh, you let me know they're thinking of selling their home. Okay. Okay. Would that be okay with you? Sure. All right. Fantastic. Is there anything else I could be doing for you today? No, I appreciate that. All right. Thank you, Neil. Have a great day. So Trent, are you kidding me? Is it that simple? That simple, Neil. <laughs> you know what? They don't believe it. So let's talk about something else. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so every 30 days, about how many people in your database now? In the, three, uh, in, the, in, in, the a, in the A group? In, in the A group? Um, there's, there's about 15, 15 people, 15 people in the A group. Okay. And how much business do you think you get from the A group? So from the A group, uh, this year, there was 20 transactions. The A group gave 15 people gave you 20 deals. Yes. What, what is it that the, the HR guy down at the, the recruiting depot? Now, I haven't been able to get an HR guy yet. Um, <laughs> one of one of them has been a huge source, and he owns a local Serve Pro. Serve Pro, oh the 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 cleanup kind yeah, of business, right? Restoration when a house floods. Yeah. And I actually came across him just circle prospecting, doing just sold calls. Found out where he worked because I, I always leave the call with one of three things happening: either I, I do business with them now. I get a referral out of them or I add them to my database. I try to do one of those three things. And in asking a lot of questions, I couldn't do business now due to a condition. I couldn't get a referral out of them. So I went to see if I can add in my database, found out he owned a serve pro. So then I just simply asked the question. That's interesting. How many, what percentage of uh, clients do you think after they get their home repaired with the insurance money do they sell? And he said probably about 80%. Really? Really. So I put him in my pocket and kept him close. So are there any other serve pro type companies in Savannah? There is, yes. Got it. And you probably have those guys on speed dial too, right? I've, I've had a few conversations, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Very very cool. All right. Well, that's that's fantastic. And then your B list has how many people? 287, I believe is the number. And you call them quarterly? Quarterly, yes. No emails, no mail? No. I, I don't spend any money um, at all to run my business except for, you know, internet, dialer, coaching, stuff like that. I don't do any mail. You know, I should a little bit. Good for you. Good for you. Wow, this has been... This has been great. This has been enlightening. Uh, really, really good stuff. So what do you think, Trent, your, your superpower? My superpower is to be able to adapt and overcome in a multitude of situations, you know, whether it be in negotiating or on an appointment or trying to obtain uh, a listing appointment or anything else. It's to, to see what's going on, be able to adapt quickly. Got it. Very military, very marine attitude. Yeah, yeah. Adapt, adapt, and 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 overcome. Adapt and overwhelm. Absolutely. Um, good stuff. Very, very good stuff. And um, I kind of, I was when we were talking on the phone. I was asking you, is there any particular objection handler or situation that that comes up that you go, "Whoa, that's mine. I got this guy or this gal." Uh, and I wouldn't say there's a particular objection handler. Um, I, I like all of them, of course, and I utilize all of them. I would say that the best part I can say is just having that ability to keep asking questions and keep going and, you know, keep digging. Um, I've, I've got this little, little clicker thing here, um, you know, for like uh, people coming into like a water park, right? You count how many people are there. Yeah. I use one of these. It's attached to my finger while I'm prospecting. And for every single contact I have, my goal is to set an appointment or at least ask a minimum of 20 questions. So I'm clicking this every question I ask. So you, you 
count the number of questions you're asking on a particular call or through the day? How, how's that? Tell me on what's a particular, going on. Particular call. Every every single contact I have, the goal is to set an appointment or ask at least twenty questions. Twenty questions or set an appointment. And, and, and the reason I, I did that and came up with that number is it's forcing you to ask more questions, which gives you a higher probability of getting an appointment. Sure. Sure, I can see that. So so of 50, 50 transactions, if 70% is listings, that's 35 of those are listings. How many of those did you take, like you, as you refer to, over the phone by asking questions? It's going to be uh, 15, 16. 16 was on the phone. 16 was on the phone where you were able to set the, not just set the appointment, but actually take the listing? It was actually, I never even went on the appointment. 16 of them were, I got them to say, if I sent a contract over right now via DocuSign, they would sign it. Everybody, anybody ever refer to you as a Jedi warrior? No. <laughs> <laughs> May the force be with you, Trent. <laughs> wow. I wish we could do 100 that way. Yeah, totally. What, what is it? There is no limit if you do that. Right. Yeah, that's fantastic. Trent, are you open to a few questions? Of course. Absolutely. Good stuff. Well, this has been fantastic. Really appreciate it. Uh, questions for Trent. Well, let's open it up to the group, please. Just wave your hand or just unmute yourself and ask. Go ahead, Armin. Trent, hi, Armin Martinez here. I'm assuming that you're a analytical, is that right? <laughs> no, Armin, I am a driver. <laughs> <laughs> a driver. Oh, yeah. really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really sure? <laughs> Armin, did you have a question? No, that was it. I just wanted to see driver versus an analytical because oh. it seems like you're a little of both. Got it. Got it. Now, like, let me ask you, uh, Armin, why, why did you feel a little of both? Well, because you keep such good track of what you're doing. You have your your schedule. Nobody's going to bother you for your uh, when you're prospecting. If there's certain things that have to be done, prospecting would have to be done. You know what I mean? It's just that you you have your schedule. It's set. You, you're you very attentive to your numbers. And that's that's what I made, made okay. a thought of that you were analytical. Hey, hey it was great that you saw that. Uh, the reason you, the, the numbers thing isn't natural to me. There was a time in my career, I didn't care about the numbers. I didn't track them. It was the furthest thing from my mind. That is something I had to learn. Trent, I found it interesting that you were already doing uh, in and above 40 deals a year before you joined court coaching. So I'm kind of curious, you just asked, what type of questions did you ask that differed from the coaching questions that you're asking now? Okay. So, uh, well, the first year before coaching, I only did 24 transactions. Uh -huh. um, and then I signed up and skyrocketed from there. Uh, okay. The questions I was, I was using Mike Ferry scripts for the most part, even in that first year, which is kind of what drove me to him to begin with and why I called them and signed up. Okay. Interesting. All right, good stuff. Hey, uh, Tess, did you have your hand up? Yes, I have a question for Trent. Trent first of all, Go thank ahead. you for coming. Appreciate that. Thank you, um, ben. When you mentioned that you took the listing over the phone, how many times did you follow up on those people? I mean, did you take them right on the spot, took the listing just by asking a question or? Were you following them up before they finally decide to say, okay, I'm giving you the listing? So a little of both, actually. Um, so my goal with follow-up, I'll cover that, is to either get to an appointment or throw them away very fast. I see. Okay. So I would say it's probably 50-50 on, on what I took over the phone being follow-up and first-time conversation. Um, the, the questions asked are just really to find motivation and really, you know, put pressure on it and get them to understand that you're the cure to their pain. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how I was able to take those listings that way. Got it. Not to put pressure, meaning 
I mean, on those questions, I can see that you really learn how to ask questions and not to be pushy is what you're trying to say, correct? Yes. I see. Okay. Yeah, you guys take anything from this at all and it's think questions and ask a lot of questions. Got it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, who else got a question? Go ahead, Iris. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Tren. Uh, I'm Iris. Uh, Tren, I have two questions. One is uh, you, uh, on your in your first year, when you start, you already did 24 transactions. So what did you do? How did you start when it was your first year in business? The second question is, um, you said you asked um, 20 questions. You try, you asked 20 questions um, on a call and you call just listed, just sold, uh, plus others. Um, because a lot of just list, just listed, just sold, they are, they have no patience and they hung up on you. So how did you, how were you able to try to en engage them and ask 20 questions? Thank you. Okay, I'll start with the second one then, um, with the, the 20 questions. Uh, a lot of times what you'll find out is if you're thinking they're impatient, that's exactly what you're gonna get. It's a mindset issue and you're, you're kind of blocking yourself and they will make forward progress. I'm not saying that's the, the, what you're dealing with personally, but you see that a lot with agents. Um, they think one way they're going to get that. Um, so my goal, I said, is to get to 20 or to get an appointment. If I would say that I always did it, I would be lying to you. People do hang up on me a lot and it's okay. Um, but my goal is to try to ask as many questions as possible before that happens. Uh, the first one you asked about the 24 transactions in the first year. How was I able to get there? Was that what the question was okay it was basically following the schedule right um if you follow the schedule everything else is easy if you get up early you get to work on time you do your prospecting everything else is going to come together and that's just what i did and then through coaching i was able to increase my skills increase my efficiencies and just be able to do it at a higher level um so that's how i did it Hello, Trent. Yeah, this is Michael. I got a question from those people that you said that you, you know, you get the listing over the phone. What is the percentage of that? They coming from referrals or the database against, you know, like a fresh new expire. I, I could not tell you the actual percentage of all the listings that were taken over. I'd have to sit down and do some math. I haven't uh, got that deep into uh, sourcing the business as far as just over the phone or not. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Good job. Okay. Who else got a question here? Raise your hand or unmute, please. Do, 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 do. I have a question. Please, Albert. So, uh, well, first of all, thank you for sharing your, uh, your knowledge. And the uh, question is, you talk about asking questions and if we sense certain things from the client, I mean, from the lead or the person you talk to, it's more likely we're going to get because that's my thing. What, are you, what did you do at the beginning to make sure you set your mind where, right where it needed to be to, in order to start getting the positive uh, response? How did you work with your mind? How did I just work with my mind as far as, being able to get in every day and, and produce is that kind of the question you're breaking up there a little bit well yes and getting the right mentality to get positive results okay uh so i had no option really um i left the marine corps you know making i mean it wasn't much it was what fifteen hundred dollars every two weeks on the first and the 15th and supported my family on that and then i left that to a commission-based business where it was sink or swim, right? I had to produce the feed and support my family or we were going to starve and go homeless. So my back was against the wall. And that's really what forced me to do everything every single day. And I've just carried that on. No, no option. I had no option. I had a lot of discipline and no skills at the time, but I had no options. I had to make it happen. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Very good. Well, Thank you, Albert. Thank you. Good. Thank Good you. job. Other questions for Trent, please.
Go ahead, Josie. Trent, thank you so much. You're so you. young and an inspiration. Tell me, how do you come up with 20 questions? <laughs> um, a, a lot of it is, you know, you gotta, you gotta repeat and reaffirm, number one, when they make a statement to a question. And when they're answering, I'm, I'm already going through the process of getting them where I want them, right? Because selling is just asking a series of questions leading to your desired result. I know where I want to get them to, and I'm just tailoring those questions to move them down that path until I can get them there. So there's a lot of repeat, reaffirm, and then listening for their pain and really being able to address it and, and getting them moving. So instead of just going from A to B real fast, I, I prolong it. And, and listen, did you say listen? I think listen it's with intent to understand how they feel and what they're thinking. Yeah, but I guess what people don't completely understand is you have a few questions in front of you that you can glance to, but it's paying attention to what the person is saying. The example I'd like to give is that I don't have any questions in front of me. I'm just paying attention to what Trent's saying. And I'm just having a conversation with him and you guys happen to be here. And that's what I keep trying to teach. Trent, is that kind of where you go with the, with the, with the deal? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I have no idea. I mean, I don't really know your history. I don't know a lot about the details. I have a couple of pieces and I know that you're a successful guy and you look fantastic, but that's it. You know, the rest of it, I'm playing without a net. Right. <laughs> so so that's that's what makes that work for Trent. Valerie, go ahead. So, you know, sometimes there's kind of a formula in terms of asking questions. And I know we practice scripts all the time and we ask a we make a statement, we ask a question. Do you have the um is it five questions and close or when do you I mean is it because you're listening and then you decide now it's time for me to ask for the appointment when do you ask so the latter of, of those two of course um there there's not going to be a set standard right of, of ask so many and then close and ask so many and close because every conversation is going to be different and you've got to be listening to what they're saying, what they're thinking. And I would say react to that, but formulate what the next steps are in your mind as you're answering those questions. Um, but I would say you should be closing a minimum of five times before you get off the phone. Got it, great stuff, good, good. Other Thank questions, you. other questions from Trent. Thank you, Valerie. Okay, other questions, anyone else? No? Go ahead, Cherry. Yeah, Trent, when you say a closing a minimum of five times, do you use five different types of closings or is it just like, hey, let's just get together for a quick 15 minute or do you have five different sets of closings that you use? Great question. So I'm not gonna ask the same question the same way each time. I may ask the same question a little bit differently each time, or I, I do have multiple closes I utilize. Um, and you can get these, Mike produced them, they're online. Um, you know, additional closes for prospecting, additional closes for expireds. You can get these and just implement them into your role play and practice. And it's gonna start coming natural. And you're gonna, you're gonna change it up a tad bit based on your conversation. But the, the main skeleton of it's gonna be there. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. No good. problem. Thank you. Excellent. All right, good. Any other questions for Trent? All right, well, what I want to do is we're one o'clock. We're coming to a hard stop here. Let's everybody unmute themselves, please. Get unmuted. Let's give him a giant round of applause. <laughs> Woo! All right. Hey, Trent. I'm just curious, would you be open to coming back and uh, maybe doing a, a question event with us, or taking 15 or 20 minutes and kind of just sharing um, how you learned how to take your questions and stuff? Absolutely. I don't mean to put you on the spot yeah, right now, but it was just for, for anything. 
You are the best. Thank you. You are very, very kind. All right, everybody. Thank you much. You know what we're going to do right now, Trent, is we take a couple minutes and talk about what we learned. You're welcome to hang out, listen to that, or, or move on. But again, thank you so much. This has been a great mastermind with Neil Schwartz. We love it today, Trent. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brad. Everybody All else. All right. Good stuff. Okay, everybody, that was amazing. So what did we learn? What did we learn? Okay, so my first, um, I love this. It's not going to affect you in five years. Don't spend any time on it. Not a great thought. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great thought. Good one. Okay, good. Go ahead, Yvonne. What I learned is uh, to ask for three to four referrals when I ask the seller to sign the listing agreement and put a sheet in there, just uh, ask them for referrals right there. Right there. Good idea. Good. What else did we learn? It's very disciplined. Yes, very disciplined. You know, uh, one of the things, few of you had asked me to bring somebody on board that wasn't somebody that was quote unquote unattainable that was doing 100, 150, 200 transactions. And so I did some research and we have, we have some of those people coming on over the next few weeks that um, pass the holidays. But, you know, here's a guy, 50, 75 transactions. He reached 85 transactions at the height in another market. Um, pretty down to earth fellow pretty down to earth, not, not much different than most anybody on this call in terms of where we come from, energy, education, et cetera. You know, it's just like me, he had trouble getting out of high school. You know, I completely relate to that. Um, and, uh, and here he is, you know, making a very nice living in Savannah, Georgia, which is probably half our price point. Um, and, um, and he does it really with, with the skills and discipline that most of you already have. You don't quite have the discipline he does, that, that, that you have to put in place. And maybe we're not asking as many questions, but this is a guy that you can model and get to your next levels. That makes sense to you? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll have this, this will probably be posted in the next 24 to 48 hours and you should be watching this video probably a couple times a week. Uh, I certainly am going to review it myself and, and uh, pick some pieces out of it to, to share. It's very important stuff. What else did we learn today? Hey, Neil, this is Michael. Oh, uh, yes, yes, sir. Is that about what you're saying, you know, when you said I didn't have any high, uh, you know, any college education or like my ferry, the same thing. He said he didn't complete college. But I think the number one you know, quality there is discipline. You know, you're not, you, you're not gonna have anything, but if you're disciplined, you know what time you're gonna start, you know what you need to accomplish, and you are disciplined regardless of the education, that's why you accomplish what you accomplish in your life, Neil. And this guy coming from whatever he got before, and that is more important than any education or how many years in the business. I think discipline is what is gonna get you there. Uh, it's a big part of it. You're right, Rob, uh, Michael. You, you do. It, it's a good observation. Absolutely. Good job. What else do we learn? What else do we learn today? Go ahead. I, I think establish a schedule and follow it is there is the key. That's really. actually the, it's the first time we've ever heard that today, wasn't it? I know for me, you see, <laughs> what my point is, see, I work all the time. You know, I work sometimes until 8, 9, 10 p.m., but I still don't produce that many deals. So now I know I work really focus when I'm at work. I know 6 o'clock or 6.30, I'm going to get off work. So I have to make my other time productive so I can have a family life. I, 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 See, for I, him, he just says six o'clock, I'm going home. I guarantee you, I guarantee you that man is done working at six o'clock at night, okay? His wife yeah. probably can set her watch on when he walks through that front door. Well, sure. Uh, I would think so, absolutely. Neil, Go ahead, Joseph. He said he did 50 transactions and that equals 300,000. Right. He needs to move. He's yeah, got four true. kids. That's, that that is true, but you know, clearly, 
be clearly true. he followed his wife to Savannah. So I'm not sure how fast he's moving, but you're right. You're right. I should call him and talk to him. <laughs> okay. Um, hey, Neil, what else do you remember? Are? Neil, remember when uh, you started working coming from Beverly Hills and your wife said you got to be home by six and you were doing everything possible to complete your schedule. And I remember you were working real hard to complete your schedule. They said by six, I better be home. And you accomplish everything because you knew what you got to do. So you have a good motivation there. No, 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 for, for sure. It can be done. I'm perfect example of somebody who, who worked till seven, eight, nine, ten 10 o'clock at night uh, at different times in my career. Uh, and when I did meet Debbie um, and we got married and had the kids, um, dinner, dinner was at six o'clock. Dinner was really 5.45 you better be home. And, and that was it. And um, that was the program, period. End of conversation. Anyone that knows my wife knows that that was the deal. Who's uh, Hi, easy, easy to do? Thanks, Robert. Okay, what else did we learn today? Well, Neil, I noticed that everyone that talks about discipline, which apparently is the biggest thing that I, everyone's getting from here, had some kind of military background. So now for once in my life, I think I should have gone to the military. <laughs> you're not, you're never too old, Albert. <laughs> yeah, tell that to you're, another you're, kid, you know. <laughs> you're, you're never too old. Yeah, the, the military, the military is, uh, is, a, is a breeding ground for discipline. There's no question about it. But uh, Mike Ferry never went to the military. And he's about as disciplined a person as I've ever met. Yeah. So yeah, he worked at Disneyland. That's why. Oh, is that what it was? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I have to tell you something. I know Mike decently well, and I don't think he makes a really good employee. <laughs> I'm sure that I guarantee I actually, true story, he was let go by Earl uh, Nightingale because he was an employee. Now think about this. Earl Nightingale, one of his mentors, uh, Mike Ferry was a sales manager or the top salesman in the company. And if you can imagine, Mike decided he didn't want to do something that Earl Nightingale wanted done. And you, the rest is what they call history. I'm sure if uh, Walt Disney said the same thing to Mike, he would tell him the same thing. It's, it's about discipline. Okay. And you can have it. Uh, the military does help teach it, but you don't have to go to the military to learn it. Okay. So I, I hope most of you feel a little bit better. You don't have to join up and, and uh, get into, into a uniform and go to boot camp. All right. Okay, what else did we learn today? One more, one more. Let's go. Anybody else? I'll go, Neil. Go ahead, go ahead Tess. I think for him, it's really knowing what I'm really hearing from him, like what you said. There's no other option. He knows his why. And he was not making any any uh, money in the military, so he has no other option but to feed the family. So he has to really work and be disciplined and be there on time, consistently, because there's no other option. He has to support the family. You're right, and and I say this all the time: the reason we don't do what we're supposed to do in most cases is because we have options not to. Okay. Even though you all say to me, I don't have an option and it's not okay with me at where I'm at. I get that. I hear that. But if that was really true, you would like he do something about it. I guarantee it. Okay. I don't have anything else. It's 10 after. I think this was really good, Robert.